It's March Mania at Sports Interaction. Wow. NHL, NBA, March Madness, MLB, so much more. It's Bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. That was good spelling. Thank you. Play Pinata Picks and Minute Madness exclusive games with insane odds you can't play anywhere else. Make your next bet at Sports Interaction. Download the app in Ontario. Use the QR code at the bottom of the screen. Or head to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. You know what I heard? What? I heard the Leafs are bad. Even when they're good, they're bad. Yep. They do not deserve to win meter this season. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> We're at that awful time of year where everyone's anxiety is at super uber peak. Well, no, everyone, no. Leaf fans, yes. Yeah, because, oh, sorry, that's what I mean. Because Leaf fans don't know what it's like unless you were, you know, alive in 2004. We don't know what it's like to get out of the first round. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I, I understand the, where the anxiety is coming from. Why is everybody so obsessed with us? Everybody talks about Leafs fans. Not Leafs fans. Oh, We're drama, baby. Let's start talking about Sandy. And you don't even care about the Leafs. Bro, you just care about talking about Leafs. For anybody things. that watches Vanderpump Rules, we are Tom Sandoval and uh, that that person that he cheated on his girlfriend with. Scandal. It was Scandal. That's right. You know. I know. Yeah. Every now and then I'll find a TikTok I don't understand and send it to my wife because she does. Yeah. And it makes her happy. That's right. So yes. I'm, I am can't believe he did that to Ariana, though. Oh, Ariana rules. Me also. Jerk. But but the point is. All right. The point is, Jesse, the obsession <laughs> is we are we are a walking, talking fan base of train wreck. We have a team that doesn't just lose uh, games that we should win, but we lose them spectacular. You know, we, what was that? Uh, what, what do you mean? That friggin game. Which one? Oh, Islanders? you mean the Islanders? Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll, yeah get to, we'll get to the Pierre Engvall revenge game in a second. I, I want to talk first about like the just just the idea that the Leafs are extraordinarily good or they're extraordinarily bad. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Um, there are people that are now making the argument that the Leafs got worse over the trade deadline. Yeah. And this isn't a single single out Dom decision. Who, well, no, Dom's not the only one. He's no Scott Wheeler, who's also a friend of the show. Yeah. Uh, lo- a lot of the analytics folks. Yeah. I noticed. And they're entitled to that opinion. And they will probably have data to back that up. And I'll be, uh, and I would have Dom on and say this, or Scott on and say this. I'll text Scott after the show if you want me to. It, it, um, uh, uh, the, I think they're absolutely wrong. Um, it, it, I would say it lacks context, and you're wrong. Yeah, and that's okay. Uh, but but I think the the whole idea that like I mean the Leafs, um, I, I think people are forgetting the Leafs won two games this this weekend. Yeah, and they beat beat up on the Carolina Hurricanes who were ahead of them in the standing. Nuh-uh. One of the four teams that are ahead of them. Nuh-uh. So, well, it so, doesn't matter. So listen, what when you lose you seven... To me lately? Listen, losing to the Islanders, it's like I told you, when you lose as a Leaf fan, you lose spectacularly. When you lose to the Islanders like that, you don't... Hey, you never want to drop a game to the Islanders because of the Tavares thing. They're you, still booing the guy. Two Cal Clutterbuck goals. Go to jail. Yeah, like, come on. Immediate <laughs> life sentence. <laughs> the we don't need you chance were pretty good. They are. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, they are. Like, listen, I, I think Leaf fans don't need to be salty about it anymore. The Islanders no. are just... Let the fans have Let fun. the fans oh, no. be the fans. Those New York fans are fucking good. It made me nostalgic for the pre-COVID times. I was like, oh, this didn't change at all. No. I like that. No. Not even a pandemic could no. quench their thirst no. for hatred of John no. Tavares. Those Locked are some good inside. fans. And we were supposed to make a trip to UBS Arena, and that has never we were, happened. Because so. of the, set, what is it, the Omicron wave knocked that out. We were supposed yeah. to go. We were talking to the UBS folks, and we are supposed to be down there. You were a part of that, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, I think your streams on Saturday night have kind of hurt our availabilities, right? It's hard to get you, down there. Yeah? Well, <laughs> every, every Saturday night, you're working. So I, I got asked a few times at the Leafs game I was at last week. Um, Hey, so you going to any playoff games? No. No, I'm not. stream them. I got to stream all of them. Jesse and I will be there, though. Yeah. yeah. My yeah, season, added, my season said that, yeah, I can have one of his tickets. Yeah. So that'll be good. But only one. Yeah. And I got to pay for it. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I <laughs> got tickets to the AEW show in Toronto, and I'm going to get blood on me. So, there you go. Oh, yeah. thanks. It's going to be great. That's cool. It's, and that's just the same. I <laughs> SummerSlam's coming. I want to say that. Uh, no. Are Wait, you are you here? close up in the AEW? Summer, SummerSlam's coming this summer in Toronto. In Toronto, the tickets go on sale this this week. SummerSlam's in Toronto. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't do. know that. Oh, maybe I will. Maybe Summer I'm going to get more blood on SummerSlam. Summer. Although they don't really blade in WWE. No, no, not anymore. No. Do you know yeah. what blading is? Adam? No idea. When you 
cut yourself Whoa. on your head ah. to, to be Whoa. like, oh, my name's Hulk Hogan and I'm and I'm bleeding. But that means I'm going to overcome. I'm surprised that <laughs> Hulk Hogan with the with the leathery texture of his skin was able to to bleed at all. Yeah, him know? and Ric Flair. They he's, were, they he's were the literally, two biggest ones. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, those guys are prime 80s. We tan too much. Mm -hmm. But that was before the spray tan, right? That was the act. You had to get in the bed and sit there for a while. Ric Flair is just a shouting wallet. <laughs> just, <yeah>. Woo! <laughs> um, I, I want to say that, that here's the thing, guys. To answer the question off the top, if you're feeling any sort of anxiety over last night, uh, listen, I, I get it as a fan. As a fan, are you ever, guys, are you ever thrilled or happy or feel good when the Leafs lose? Uh, extremely rare. Okay. It's got to be the exact right circumstances. Right. And, and, and so, uh, do you feel good when the Leafs win? Regardless of how they won. Almost always. Yeah. <laughs> so, sometimes you win games you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes you lose games you shouldn't. And sometimes, uh, it's, it's just before the playoffs. There's a few key players out injured, including the, 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 the bell of the ball of the trade deadline that you made. And uh, you're putting lines in a blender going, who's going to make it? Yeah. And sometimes that guy you got at the trade deadline is out for a month with a broken finger. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, I, listen, feels I'm not, like that's relevant. I'm not here to feels like, like that should be part of the conversation. After the Islanders game, I felt like shit. I don't like when the Leafs lose. Oh. But what I didn't do was allow the feeling of my favorite team just lost permeate into, well, they must suck then. There's a yes. difference between being disappointed that your team lost. And listen, I will only be 100% happy when the Leafs go 82-0. That's I've come to that realization and as a fan. And then 16-0. Huh? And then 16-0. Mm -hmm. I will never be happy when the Leafs lose. But I don't let it always, anyway, at the beginning of the season, maybe I was different. But I don't let it become like a thing. No. Where this is a trend. They lost tonight, so they must they might be losing every game. The Leafs don't suck. The Leafs are great. This is a great hockey team. It's just that there are people who are very intelligent who are like, I don't like the moves they made. And then there are people who are very intelligent running the team who are like, we do. No, but like the guys they lost off the roster are Engvall and Sandine. And that's it. If that sinks you, you didn't deserve to win the cup anyway. So let's let's get to Engvall. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. we'll, we'll tie it back into that game. Uh, I had an Islanders fan send me a question for the LFR that I didn't end up answering because I didn't end up doing questions for the LFR and I deleted it and I can't find it. But it was basically, <laughs> do you expect Pierre Engvall to keep this up? And I was going to say no. And it wasn't a goal scoring thing because Engvall was sort of hot and cold. His cold streaks were really cold. His hot streaks were surprisingly hot. But like we saw him throw a couple hits mm -hmm. in that game. And they weren't even really vicious hits. And no, he's not going to keep that up. He was drafted in 2014. He's been playing for the organization in North America since 2018. And no, no, the enormous sample size says no. And it's not like the Leafs were like, Pierre, don't hit. They would have killed for him to hit. He'd still be a Leaf if he was hitting. But instead, a dude like seven inches shorter than him, legit, in Sam Lafferty, is standing in front yesterday and the puck goes off him. Like it could have gone off of Engvall any given night and it went in the back of the net. So there's Engvall. The other one, and this one pisses me off, and a lot of you need to ask yourself if you did this, because a lot of you did, Rasmus Sandin. When he was hot as a pistol in his first few games as a cap, you couldn't shut up. And I get it. I totally get it. And then what happened? He played a week or two of dog shit games. He didn't, you, you didn't say a fucking thing. You didn't say it. Oh, sorry, I forgot we got this camera back. You didn't say a fucking thing. All right. And this isn't a pro or against Rasmus Sandin thing that he was hot as a pistol. And then he had a few dog shit games like minus three or minus four or something like that. I don't, I don't remember hearing anything. I don't remember hearing anything. So we're only going to talk about the good things he does and none of the bad. It's a, it's a Leaf fan thing. I remember back in the day, the Leafs traded for a guy, a restricted free agent who wouldn't resign in Boston. And his name was... Uh, uh, Nick Ritchie? No. A restricted free agent. Oh, Andre who Kasha? Who wouldn't resign in Boston. Restricted free agent. The Leafs traded for him. Who? Who? Well, it wasn't. I thought you were going to say Phil Castle. It wasn't. It was Dimitri Kristic. Now, oh! Dimitri Kristic was coming off like a 25, 30 goal season. No reason to think he'd be any different. And he was going to add to the second or third line for the Leafs. 
He ended up being complete dog shit. Didn't work out here. And then went to, I think he was traded to Washington and he scored in his first game in Washington. And I remember the Sports Center anchor. It might have been Jay on right, but I don't think so. The long time ago. And the and and he and his partner at the time, and I don't I definitely don't think it was Dan O'Toole, but they were they said, Well, I'm I'm kind of rooting for him. I'd like to see him, you know, go back and show the Leafs what for. And then of course he fell off the map and he stunk. But Leaf fans have always had a fixation with how's the former Leaf doing See, I remember elsewhere, which is sort of why we make a joke about it on Sports Interaction, right? Like when yeah. we do our famous yeah, uh, friends, or our, sorry, our, our, our former friends bets. And it hits all the time. But also, um, I, I look back on Dimitri, Dimitri Christich as a Leaf fondly because he was on my NHL 99 team and he was very good. Right, exactly. All right. No, my, the, the, my, the thing with Sandine is like he's playing in a different, completely different role in Washington. His, his game high in, ter- in terms of time on ice in Toronto was about 23-15. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was very it was rare. Like Twenty three minutes to that high. was was the max he ever played. That was the highest he played on. If currently for the Washington Capitals, since he's been there, he's crossed that mark seven times. Twelve he's playing about twenty five minutes a night. It's 12, a completely different role. Twelve points in nine games, minus five. <laughs> okay. So no, but like he's yeah, he's, he's getting a lot of power play time. That's why the yeah the minus five. Is no, there. but like what I'm saying is like. I have not found out anything about Rasmus Sandin from his time in Washington that I didn't already know. He's a good offensive defenseman. Yeah. He can run a power play. He's not great defensively. Also, like, he didn't have a role in Toronto. Yeah. They, they tried it. That him. was what he was frustrated and, about. <laughs> and that's why he wanted to leave. Sandin sat out the beginning of the year. He held out training camp because he didn't have a contract. And he was unhappy. And then they didn't play him because there was no role. And he never took a spot in the lineup. Like, I don't understand the, the people resenting the I Sandin think it's, deal. I think it's, there again, I think it goes back to a generalized anxiety, which as a Leaf fan, you've earned. Mm-hmm. You've yes. earned the reason to doom scroll. You've earned the you've earned the the there's no reason why you shouldn't think that the worst is yet to come. But I'm telling you this year, it's not like that. I I heard a great one the other day. What do you got? Every now and then TikTok will send things to me that I did not tell the algorithm I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And then I am. And I'm like, how did I get here? One of them is a dude who fixes cow hooves. Oh, that's great. Especially when they got stuck, in, like stuff right? stuck in the hoof, and they pull it out. No, oh, yeah. Another thing the TikTok algorithm decided I love a step by step guide how to do a proper crawfish boil. Oh, I don't know why, but now you know. And the third is a dude in a Detroit uh, Lions toque who takes an ice bath outside every day, and when he gets in the ice bath, he gives you an inspirational quote. And he said, worrying about, uh, uh, worrying about tomorrow is carrying tomorrow's burden with today's strength. Ooh. Ooh. That's good shit. 